Ever since my beloved Pixel Fold suffered a random, spontaneous crack in the inner screen, by the way, that is a story that I hope to tell the final chapter on relatively soon. There seems to be some movement there, but I am not counting my chickens before they hatch, so that's all I'm going to say about it for now. If you want the story and what I'm talking about, I'll put that link in the description. Ever since that happened, I have gotten a ton of comments from people saying things like this, varying from, you know, fairly understanding to fairly snarky, but basically saying things like, you uh, seem to think that foldables were great, you seem to think that they were more, more durable than most people think that they were, and yet yours broke, and you are having a terrible time getting the thing taken care of, even though it probably, I, I'll just say, I don't believe it was my fault that it cracked. You can believe whatever you want to believe on that front, but I opened it up and it cracked. It had never been, you know, damaged in any visible, obvious way prior. And I knew that I was going to have to kind of address this subject. As someone who's been, maybe you could call me an ambassador for the foldable phone world, someone who's used a Z Fold 2, a Z Fold 4, a OnePlus Open, a Pixel Fold, and I've made tons of videos about them and I've talked about them ad nauseum, thereby sometimes maybe inadvertently convincing lots of people to purchase them. The fact that I've had now such a publicly terrible time, <laughs> I knew that I was going to have to broach this subject and that's what I'm going to do in this video. Has my experience with the Pixel Fold changed my opinion on foldables as a whole. Now, a lot of you may be surprised by this. Some of you might think I'm crazy. But by and large, my opinion about foldable devices themselves has not really shifted or changed. Nothing that happened with this Pixel Fold was all that shocking to me. Now, you may be saying, Shane, I watch your videos and you made this video talking about how you didn't think the Pixel Fold was all that fragile. You made videos talking about using the Z Fold 4 for a year, largely with no case. And you talked about how it had held up really well for you. And yeah, all that's absolutely true. And I still stand by pretty much everything I say in those videos. Now, look, don't get me wrong. If you post 50 videos every month and you don't script anything, I'm sure that some of you could go back through my videos and pull out a clip and show it to me. And I'd probably say, well, I didn't, that that wasn't a very smart thing for me to say. That's not really what I meant. But by and large, we're being charitable here. My general view on these devices has not changed. You are going to always run the risk of getting a lemon. With anything that's mass produced, you can have a defect. I came from the automotive world, okay? And if I was going to sell you a ball joint for your car, I had different levels different tiers of hardware manufacturers that I could sell you. And I knew that the baseline, which was DriveWorks, where I worked at Advanced Auto Parts, that part was more likely to be defective than our CarQuest Blue or Moog, as it used to be back in the day. But even still, Moog could be defective. It would occasionally happen. And the same thing is true with your phone. And I will even tell you, and I've said this in prior videos, with a folding phone, I think that the chance that you're going to have something be defective about that folding screen, you're, you're adding moving parts. Of course, that increases the chance of something being defective. That has not changed with what's happened to me, okay? This was always a risk that I knew I was running, but I almost in my mind look at that as being a different thing than being fragile, right? So I still think that the Pixel Fold is quite tanky and that the Z Fold 4 that I have was is quite tanky tanky. Being a defective part is a set. You may think I'm crazy for separating these two, but that's just how I think about it. Durability is like, if I take it and I drop it, did it break? Is it going to break? I think that they, by and large, will survive that kind of thing. And I have reports from you guys, and I've seen things like this. I've seen my wife drop her Z Flip 3 like 47 times, okay? They're fairly durable. But that's a different thing than having a defect in the screen to me. Again, you can have a different view on that and that's totally fine. My point is that's not really changed. The, the thing that's changed for me, the opinion that has changed for me is that I assumed perhaps naively that if you did run into a defect, the factory warranty would take care of it relatively easy 
relatively stress-free. That is where my mind has radically changed, and I will tell each and every one of you, if you buy a $2,000 phone, do not rely solely on your warranty. Try it if it breaks, and if it doesn't get covered, doesn't get taken care of, rather than beating your head against the wall, you're going to probably be happy that you either paid for preferred protection or for some sort of insurance through your carrier. I have Mint Mobile, and you know what I did the other day? I bought their one-year all-state protection for whatever phone my SIM happens to be in. And what's cool about that is if I move my SIM out of my phone and put it into another phone, apparently it follows the SIM. So I went ahead and paid $90 to have that. That's what I'm going to do going forward. And this has sort of been one of these things that slowly built up over time. As I got more and more comments, I saw more and more posts on Reddit or on social media of people with Samsung phones, OnePlus phones, Google phones. They're folding phones from any OE and breaking, and the fact that the customer service was, it seemed to me, far too often subpar, that was sort of beginning to change my perspective on things, but I had not acted on it yet. Maybe there was still some little bit of naivete in there that thought it wouldn't happen to me, and I wouldn't have to roll the dice in that way. Of course, when my phone broke, I did make this community post, and I said, look, let's talk about this. Let's talk about the bad customer service and we're going to dig into this subject and make it as real for everyone else as I possibly can. So it's one of those things where maybe my thoughts on this should have changed faster than they did. Maybe I should have taken the reports from people more seriously, more quickly, but unfortunately it did require something really bad happening to me as I am human to really put me over the top and say, look, you've got a little bit of an audience. You need to talk about this and make the risk clear to everyone. I've shown these polls a few times now, and I guess I'm going to keep referencing them, talking about hardware issues with the OnePlus Open, and we get percentages there, right? 13 and 7 is 20. Let's just go ahead and add it all together and say 27% of people. I did the same thing with the Z Fold 4, or the Z Fold in general, I guess I should say. 20% plus 12 is 32, plus 8 is 40 percent of people that responded to that and then I talked about the fact that there was that study or whatever you would call analysis from Allstate that said that one-third of American smartphone users broke their phone in 2023 we talked about negative confirmation bias and I think that the conclusion I tried to communicate I tried to communicate to you guys was that folding phones are a little bit more fragile than normal phones. So to recap as succinctly as possible, has my opinion on foldable devices changed? The answer is no, not really. I'm going to continue using them. They will continue to be my primary device of choice. My SIM is currently in the OnePlus Open, although it will be leaving this device probably in a couple of days for a review unit of another device, but it will go back into a foldable whenever I'm done with that. I still absolutely love these devices. Do I think that they're going to be the future? No, I don't. I think that they're going to continue to be a high-end niche for the most part. Hopefully there are some mid-range. At that point, I still think it's going to be a niche. I think most people are going to be better served with a slab phone, and that's going to continue being the case. Do I think that my opinion on their durability has changed based on my Pixel Fold having what I believe to be a defect, a something about maybe the tension from the hinge, uh, pulling on the screen. I really don't know what the mechanism was. Has that affected my opinion? Do I not think that they're more fragile, less durable than I did before? Here's the reality, guys. My original Surface Duo had a defect, and I had to send it back to Microsoft to be replaced. Stuff happens, okay? I even I think a Pixel 3, maybe, had a defect of some sort. I can't actually remember what it was, but they replaced it actually really, really easily. I've had a Surface Pro 7 be defective and have to be replaced via warranty as well. These things happen. If you own as many devices as I own and you use them as much as I use them, you're going to have defects. Now look, if I get, you know, another foldable phone and it spontaneously fails and then my insurance won't cover it for some reason, yeah, okay, maybe some things are gonna start to shift. But for now, my opinion has only changed on how these OEMs handle their warranty responsibilities. The devices themselves, they're still pretty much what I thought that they were. So hopefully this long-winded video was entertaining and illuminating on my current position. I've not really lost the faith in these devices. I still will keep using them. Maybe you think I'm crazy. I know some of you do. Some of you have vocally uh, told me that I am crazy already because apparently a video where I 
uh, took Google to task for their poor customer service was me defending Google, which was a very strange series of comments for me to read. That's neither here nor there. Guys, thanks for watching. Subscribe for more content just like this. And until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.